Looking at source documents for credit transactions, there's two types, sales invoices and purchase invoices. So looking at whether the business issues the document or it receives it, it that'll change which type of invoice it is. So if it's the business selling to a customer on credit, the business will give the customer goods and they'll also give them a sales invoice um, and that's because we're the one that's making the sale so the business records that as a sales invoice. The customer gets the original of that document and the business will keep a copy. However, the business will also buy goods on credit from suppliers. So once they give us the goods and we don't pay for them on the day, they will issue us what's called a purchase invoice. So in this case, the business is the one who's purchasing. So we'll call that a purchase invoice and the business will have the original and the supplier will keep a copy. We also see on an invoice uh, terms. So in this case, we can see terms 5 30 and slash 60. We need to know what they mean. So or what that statement means. So the first part of it, 5 30, the first number refers to any discount that the customer might be eligible for. The second number, uh, in this case 30, represents the number of days in which uh, the customer must pay for the discount to be valid. So in this case, if a sale was made on day zero, this customer has 30 days back. Uh, to pay it back, in which case they'll get a 5% discount. The N60 part, that's just the, simply the due date. The actual number of days that the customer's got to pay the account and after that date the account will be classified as overdue. So in this particular example, after 60 days that will be classified as an overdue account and the due date is the 60th date. Looking at a typical invoice, um, the important information we want to look for, the invoice number up the top, each invoice should have a unique number. We'll have the buyer's name, so the buyer's name will appear underneath. The seller's name will be at the top, that's the person issuing the document. We'll have the credit terms and we just explained what they meant. We'll have the date and lastly we'll have the amount that's actually owed by the debtor.